Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest, the capital of Hungary. Hi, Frederick. Hi, Jaskaran. Hi, Ashraf, Sami, Samuel, and Beck John. Good to see many of our members already in the class. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. If you'd like to become a member of our uh, channel, click the join button beside the subscribe button. If you don't see it, send me an email and I can help you out a little bit. All right, students, in this class, we are looking at a reading section to practice our reading. This is a brand new passage coming from our exams that have not yet been released, but will be later this year. The materials come from aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there. And for general IELTS, check us out at G. I-E-L-T-S help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. On both of our websites, we have loads and loads of great materials to help you improve your English and communication skills. This is our academic website here. Click that big red button to join the premium package. It's worth your time and a little bit of investment for sure. This is the general IELTS version. Click that green button there or that red button, sorry, green background, uh, and uh, enjoy learning. To send me an email, you can do that with adrian at aehelp.com, and I will get back to you in due time. All right, students, so again, today, uh, reading class for members, and then that will be followed uh, in about 90 minutes with listening part one and two practice where everybody can join the chat. Hi, Hassan. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Rashika. Nice to see more of our members. All right, students. Uh, here we go. Let's get right into it. So the reading passage for today is titled A Piece of Peruvian Culture. All right. Uh, so, uh, of course, the first step uh, when you get to your reading section is carefully observe the passages. I haven't talked about this yet before, uh, members, but uh, it's a good idea uh, to uh, look at the title of all three passages uh, before you start reading. So, you don't have to start uh, with passage one in the reading section. You can start with passage two or passage three. And the way IELTS designs these passages is passage one should be easier than two and two should be easier than three. The way they do this is with the type of topic and with the kinds of questions that they include. But there's no guarantee that for you specifically, uh, that will be true. For some people, uh, there could be a situation where passage two or passage three is easier uh, just because it's your area of knowledge. So uh, if some of you are from Latin America and uh, maybe even Peru, uh, then uh, you definitely would want to start with this passage just because you're going to be very familiar and comfortable with it. So. Uh, review the title of all three passages before you begin your reading. And if you find one that happens to be closer to home, uh, then uh, choose that one. Um, does everybody get what I mean there? So choose the passage uh, to start with that uh, is most familiar. If none of them are, so if all three of them are like, well, none of these are my cup of tea, then definitely go passage one, two, and three in that order because that's the order of difficulty. Okay, so the IELTS is a progressive exam, which means it progressively gets more and more difficult. Is that kind of, so that's my first tip for the day, even before we get into our reading today. Is that clear for everyone, what I mean there? Is there any questions about that? Okay, so I'm getting a couple of yes, that's clear. Okay, so here's just a quick tip then, again, just to recap. So uh, look at the title of all three passages before you begin the reading section. If one appears to be your area of expertise, uh, then start with 
that one, okay? If not, then go in the order of passage one, two, and three, okay? Uh, it definitely makes more sense to start with one that might be close to home as that will give you confidence going into the following passages as well. Okay, thanks for the feedback, ladies and gents. I can see a lot of you are like, yeah, that's clear. That makes sense. Okay, so uh, plus you'll be faster as well, most likely. Okay, uh, here's another little side note with that. Usually passages that discuss physical uh, objects are easier than abstract ideas uh, like a passage about uh, volcanoes volcanoes uh, versus uh, philosophy Okay, so that's one of the ways that IELTS uh, makes a passage more difficult is the topic will be in social sciences. It will be something that you can't really see or touch. So you have to understand it conceptually much more. Is that clear? That's kind of an important side tip there as well. So passages that deal with physical reality are usually easier just because you can visualize them. You have visual information from your past. It's definitely more challenging when you don't have that visual information like sociology, philosophy, and uh, so on, psychology, okay? All right, uh, Ashraf is asking, sir, in reading paragraph generally, uh, where can we get the hint for the answer? Is it the first line or the last line? Um, Ashraf, there is no strategy like that. Uh, for some answers, the uh, Information's coming from the beginning, for some it's the middle, some it's the end, and for others, you have to understand the whole paragraph or even the whole passage to get the right answers. So the answers are coming, uh, to simply answer your question, Ashraf, the answers are coming from anywhere and everywhere in the passage. So there is no kind of a trick of um, looking to a specific area, okay? Uh, and that's why it's really important that you learn to read the passage because otherwise, if you're just searching for keywords and locations in the passage, then um, you're going to use a lot of time and uh, you probably won't get more than six, okay, with that strategy. So careful with that. That's a good question. All right. Okay, uh, so let's get back to this. Uh, here we go. Our uh, passage for today, the title is A Piece of Peruvian uh, culture. Now, we might guess that this could be an object because it's a piece, but maybe not. Um, so when you have these kinds of subtitlings, so there's a, a variety of formats for these reading passages of, as well. This one is kind of broken into these nice paragraphs that each carry their own title. Uh, and the first one right away we can see says, Chica, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, Chica, uh, what is it? Okay, so right away we see here that, okay, this is probably about something called Chica, okay? All right, um, so here we can ask what, why, how with the title, but we probably won't get too much information other than thinking, okay, Central American culture, some part of history, uh, what are the popular parts of culture in Central America, their own style of dance, uh, music, um, their own type of tapestry, art, uh, own versions of food, for example, right? Um, lots of corn, okay? So these are kind of the ideas that you should be thinking. Uh, collect as much information as you can about what you know in regards to Central American uh, and Latin American culture, okay? Uh, students, if you haven't done a lot of reading about international cultures, I definitely recommend doing some of that, okay? So depending on where you are in the world and what kind of schooling you received in your school curriculum, uh, you have a different range of international knowledge. Uh, and for the IELTS, the IELTS is a global exam, so they will include topics on a wide range of cultures and countries around the world. So if you haven't had education that includes 
much of that. Uh, definitely when you're doing your reading practice and your regular reading uh, exercises, uh, try to touch on a variety of different cultures around the world uh, to learn that information. That will become very, very useful, okay? So that's my next tip here, a few tips here as we get going, okay? So since uh, the IELTS is an international exam, the topics in the test can cover a broad range of cultures and nationalities. It is a good idea to brush up, brush up is an idiom here, uh, on a broad range of information. Okay, so look at pop culture, look at what's been popular in Russia, what are the key elements of Russian history, what are the key elements of certain Latin American history, uh, North American, African, Asian, uh, Middle, um, Central Asian, and so on, okay? So make sure to do that. You don't have to, of course, learn all of that, but definitely uh, getting kind of an idea so you can uh, get some clarity when you get to these reading passages, okay? So read about world history and about world cultures. All right. So uh, the next step, what is it? So we look at the title, we look at these subtitles a little bit, History of Chica, uh, and then what should we do? What will help us to better understand this passage potentially? Okay, Dr. Krishna says it's corn beer is what it is. Yeah, I think you're on the right track, Dr. Krishna. Okay. Carolina is saying both should be pronounced ch. Chicha? Carolina, is that the right pronunciation? Chicha? I'm going to say it lots here, so... I know you're from uh, Central America, Colombia, so if you can help me out, thank you. Um, okay, chicha. Okay, thank you, Carolina, for that help. All right, so that's the right pronunciation. Uh, so Sammy says, understand the title and visualize. We've kind of gotten past that, Sammy, and I already gave you the critical thinking, Boomi, of uh, thinking about um, uh, Central uh, American, Latin American culture, okay? All right, so what do we do after that? So we've done the title, we've done our critical thinking, we've visualized this part of the world. Uh, Begjan says, let's take a look at the questions. And Begjan is right, so definitely take a look at the questions. Nice and quick, okay? You shouldn't spend too much time here, just a couple minutes uh, to get some help on what information is included because the questions are kind of like a summary of the passage that you're going to read, taking out the main elements of the passage, right? So go through the questions, look at the ones that have information which is likely in the passage. Um, so here it says, complete each sentence with the correct ending, A to M below, and we have six questions here. And we have lots and lots of choices. Um, looks like about 12 choices or so. So the choices could really confuse us. There is uh, definitely a lot of information that's misleading and may not even be in the passage. So we don't bother with the selections. All we look at for this type of question um, are the first half of the statements because we know that this is somewhere in the passage, right? Uh, so let's uh, read this together. Okay, this is a reading class members and viewers, so make sure to read. Don't just listen to me, okay? Uh, read with me, and if you can, definitely read aloud. Uh, so if you're not watching this video from your workplace, which might scare your colleagues and your boss might be going, what is that person doing? Um, but if you're in a place where this is possible, definitely read with me, okay? So though soft drinks and beer are popular in Peru, okay, keep going with me. Uh, while it is believed that chicha has been around for thousands of years, before a person was sacrificed, ooh, although there are two main types of chicha, uh, similar to mulled cider, chicha morada contains cloves and cinnamon. And number six, while chicha de, de hora, I believe, uh, is made from less flavorful yellow corn, okay? All right, 
Carolina is probably laughing at my pronunciation here a little bit, but that's good, Carolina. Um, all right, and then we'll keep going here, okay? So now uh, we arrived to uh, a summary completion type question. These are very common in the academic and general IELTS. These are very good to review before the passage because they are um, absolutely a summary, okay? So, and they're paraphrased. So summary type questions will always use different words than what you see in the passage. So definitely don't try to look for keywords because you won't find them. Uh, these are paraphrased. If you could just do this by keywords, it would be way too easy, okay? All right, um, so uh, note the titling here as well. It's quite important. Okay, production. Though it has been traditionally produced for generations, in modern times, this is a something. For example, traditionally, women would chew the corn and spit it into a bucket. This process would help stimulate something because of the chemicals present in the women's saliva. Ooh, getting more and more interesting here. All right, uh, culture. Even today, chicha has a place in the culture of Peru. Outside of Peru, the drink is consumed by those in South as well as something America. Uh, chicha has also given rise to forms of music, dance, architecture, and film, an entire counterculture. In this sense, chicha is a drink for the common people, not for the something. All right. And then last but not least, here we have three true, false, not given questions or yes, no, not given questions. And in this case, uh, we want to avoid these. We have no idea if uh, the information is right or not. It's simply confusing. There is no value for you to read. As, in fact, there's negative value for you to read uh, yes, no, not given, or true, false, not given before the passage because it doesn't necessarily help you understand the passage. Rather, it can uh, confuse you when you're reading it. All right, so we've done that. Uh, now, uh, let's get on to reading, and I'm happy to see that Jainil, Nazir, Bumi, and others, Frederick, are clear about why we don't read true, false, not given before the passage, okay? So definitely ignore those. All right, so let's read together. We'll check a little bit of comprehension as we go along. Um, I will read at the pace that you should read in the IELTS, so at a nice, comfortable pace. You do not need to rush through the passage, okay? Um, you can take up to 10 minutes uh, to read these passages, which is about half the speed that you will need in university to complete the same, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? So some people think there's not enough time in the reading section to read, but in fact, uh, IELTS, in my opinion, and in the opinion of other experts, oh, just a sec, I'll get you back on screen there. Camera decided to take a snooze. Okay, just give me one minute. Um, so other experts will agree as well that there's actually plenty of time to read the passage because in reality, in college or in university, you do not have this amount of time to read, okay? Uh, so it's more than ample amount of time. Okay, so if you can't read the passage and answer the questions in 20 minutes, then you need to step back one and focus more on improving your reading fluency by doing lots and lots of reading, of course. Okay, all right. Thank you for the compliments on my cute daughter, Frederick. <laughs> She's a little bigger now, but anyhow. Um, so let's read and let's check our comprehension. Here we go. Okay, so uh, Chicha. What is it? Chicha is a drink made from corn that is part of Peruvian culture. The history of chicha stretches back at least 500 years and possibly further into the past. Made from corn, a plentiful crop in the region, chicha is available in both fermented, alcoholic, and non-fermented, non-alcoholic forms. Sales of chicha in Peru rival those of the most popular soft drinks and beers. Needless to say, even after hundreds of years, chicha is incredibly popular 
in the region. Okay, so what should happen here is you should definitely get a visual idea of what you're reading. So as soon as you read this kind of paragraph, you should visualize a nice glass of uh, yeah, right? And of course, you should probably see the uh, corn. I'm just going to do a quick corn drawing here uh, that it's made from, okay? So you should be seeing the corn. You should be seeing some older history here and this nice tall glass of cold uh, chicha. I'm not sure if it's carbonated, but I put bubbles in there anyway. Visualize, okay? Corn drink. That's right. It's a popular corn drink. So uh, here we continue, okay? Uh, history of chicha. Some historians think chicha has been prepared and consumed in communities in the Andes Mountains for thousands of years. However, direct evidence of this fact is difficult to find. However, it is known that the Incas produced chicha in the 1500s. For example, women were taught the techniques to brew the beverage in what were called aklawasi, or feminine schools. Corn mills have been discovered at the Incan ruins known as Machu Picchu, and it is clear that the drink was used for ritual and religious purposes. For example, chicha would be given as a sacrifice to the gods and even served to human sacrifices before they were killed. Evidence shows that it was consumed in significant quantities in the Incan culture for these reasons. And to, th and to, say, and to this say it is common to offer chicha to Pachamama, the earth mother, by pouring some out before drinking. Okay, cool. So we read this paragraph. Again, we have to digest the information, practice this at home. So here we're talking about the older history of uh, chicha. And um, to test your knowledge at home when you're practicing reading, okay, you should ask yourself some questions. You should generate some questions, all right? Uh, so when you're practicing your reading at home and you read a paragraph like this, of course, this is really good exercise to do in uh, partners. Uh, you can do something like this. Ask a question, see if your partner can answer it. So partner one would say something like, how long ago has uh, chicha been around? Okay, and then partner two should be able to answer that, okay? So let's do a little bit of this. Ask and answer some questions about this paragraph just to show you this practice strategy, okay? So how long ago has chicha uh, been around? Anybody? Okay, Sammy says 5,000 years. I think that's a little bit off, Sammy. Anybody else with another answer? This could easily be a true, false, not given question. Uh, Frederick says 500 years, which is close. Okay, always try to give accurate answers. Ashraf says 500 years. That's close. Same with Bekjan. Uh, according to the passage, it says 500 years or more. Okay, uh, that's the little detail there. Always be accurate because the passage does say or more. So your true, false, not given could be something like uh, Chicha has been around for over 500 years, that would be um, true, okay? Because the passage does say, or more, all right? Okay, um, so that's what you want to do. And then partner two should, of course, fairly be the next one to ask a question. So what could be a question? What's a nice question that comes to mind? Let's see if you can come up with a good question here, okay? So what is another question that you can ask to test your own understanding, or if you're in partners. Okay, Frederick says, what were the reasons? Okay, so asking questions is a really good way to improve your English. Uh, too often, students just think of answers. So what were the reasons to produce and consume? That's what I would say, Frederick, consume. Uh, Chicha. Am I not even spelling that right here? Uh, and then partner one 
would say what? So partner one might say something like, um, as a religious uh, food or beverage, an offering to the gods. Now here, of course, you want to practice your vocabulary as well if you can. So a sacrificial offering to the gods. Okay, for example, religious reasons. Okay, good. So you get the idea. Uh, this is really important practice. When you practice asking questions, by the way, uh, members, viewers, uh, it's also a good way to improve your grammar. Uh, one of the reasons a lot of students have difficulty with grammar is because they practice mostly from the answer perspective or the statement perspective and not enough from the question perspective. When you use your grammar in both questions and answers, uh, then you improve your grammar more quickly, okay? All right, <clears throat> so I see other good questions coming up. That's great, that's what you want to do. Uh, but for now, let's continue on with the reading, okay? So history of chicha, and then now let's get to types of chicha. So read with me. There are two main types of chicha, though the exact formulation and production of chicha is likely to vary from town to town. The two main types of chicha, morada and chicha de hora. Uh, chicha morada is a non-fermented and non-alcoholic drink made from purple corn, uh, which gives it its characteristic purple color. It is high in antioxidants, helps to prevent certain cancers, and lowers blood pressure and cholesterol. It has also shown regenerative properties, such as the formation of collagen and the creation of connective tissue. It often contains cinnamon, cloves, and is thus similar to mulled cider. Okay, so again, very visual. Um, here we're getting into two main types of chicha. Make sure you keep these separate. Here we go. Uh, chicha de hora is the fermented and therefore alcoholic version of the drink. It is created by a process similar to that of beer. Unlike chicha morada, chicha de hora is made from yellow corn. Though the corn used is quite different from the corn many people are familiar with. It is more fibrous and has much larger kernels and is much less flavorful. However, this makes it well suited to form the base of such a drink. In addition to corn, the drink often includes either quinoa or for a sw uh, sweeter version, strawberries. Now, students, when you're doing the reading passage and you come across some strange words that are unfamiliar, like quinoa uh, or even uh, chicha, as you heard, at the beginning, I said chica, which I believe is uh, uh, woman in Spanish. Um, and so uh, don't try to pronounce, okay? Don't stop and try to pronounce these words accurately in your mind while you're reading. Just read through them. It's not important, okay? It's not important that you uh, figure out that word exactly. Just kind of read the best as you can. Don't let it block or stifle your reading fluency. Okay, don't let it slow you down, all right? Okay, uh, let's keep going. So production. The traditional production of chicha is today rare, but for most of its period of popularity, chicha has been produced according to particular standards. For instance, the corn is not simply mashed up. Rather, it is chewed and spit into a bucket. This, as mentioned above, was traditionally a woman's job. The woman's saliva would help to activate the fermentation process through the naturally occurring enzymes in the saliva. Women were also in charge of the rest of the brewing process from germination, germinating the corn to extracting the malt sugars, boiling the wort, and then fermenting it. Okay, so here a little bit about the process. Again, very visual. You should see yourself as one of these women uh, making... Uh, the chicha. That's what I see. So I see myself as a woman and I'm chewing on some corn and spitting it into a bucket, doing that all day. Wow, what, what difficult labor that would be. Um, I'd have the strongest jaw in the world. 
and uh, I'm visualizing that, okay? Let's keep going. So part of Peruvian culture, uh, chicha to this day holds a special place in Peruvian culture. It is widely considered the drink of Peru and continues to be enjoyed by generations of Peruvians as well as other South and Central Americans. The, culture impact, the cultural impact of chicha has grown even beyond the beverage, however. Chicha has come to describe forms of dancing, painting, architecture, film, and other aesthetic areas. Chicha music, for example, became popular in the second half of the 20th century. Chicha's origins are as a drink of the people, sometimes discounted by the elite, and the aesthetic schools associated with it share this counter-elite ethos. Okay, so again, visualize the culture. So uh, chicha, kind of like sushi, uh, started as part of the common people in Peru, uh, obviously. And the elite, the bourgeois, the people who might carry their noses a little bit high, uh, are like, Ugh, you, didn't, you drink chicha? I don't do that. I, I drink wine. Um, unlike sushi, which became very popular for the elite and very expensive. Again, visual. All right, here we go. Uh, let's continue where and how to drink it. Uh, chicha in its many forms is available almost anywhere in Peru. It is available from street vendors, sidewalk stands, in markets, or even through your car window stopped at a red light. But the most authentic place to enjoy chicha is in what is called a chicheria, a kind of bar or tavern where chicha is served to guests. These establishments often operate outside the legal framework, are often run by families, and emphasize the drinking of chicha and the socialization it helps create. Chicherias are traditionally marked by a broomstick atop a dark doorway, adorned by flowers, ribbons, baskets, or even plastic bags. Once inside, 25 people, uh, 25p or uh, pesos, I guess that would be, about uh, 30 cents USD will buy a half liter of the traditional beverage. Notably, the drink is often consumed with alarming pace. The locals can finish a glass in mere moments, asking for seconds quickly thereafter. If you are ever in Peru and want to connect with the locals and the culture, a glass of chicha is a must. From ancient times to the Incan period today, chicha has helped to define the culture of a people and region. Okay, so we're done our reading. We have a lot of clear ideas. Now we want to answer the questions and we want to do this as much as possible without searching back in the text. Now at this point, Frederick's saying, but I don't know the vocabulary in this paragraph. Uh, don't worry about it, Frederick, in the official exam. If this happens, just keep going. If you're at home, then definitely stop and review the vocabulary, uh, translate it, and make sure that you understand it more. Okay. All right. So um, the way to do these kinds of sentence ending questions is to look at the statement, complete the sentence on your own, and then choose the correct answer because this is kind of like multiple choice. Okay. If you think about it, when you read this first half of the statement, if you look at your choices, you're going to have, I think it's 13. You have 13 choices. So if you're just reading these, it's like having a multiple choice question with 13 choices, for the, especially for the first one when you haven't knocked any of them out. That would be really time-taking and very confusing, possibly, especially since there might be a few kind of correct answers. Now, the other point is you want to look for the right grammar. Okay, yeah, Ashraf says, well, it's a lot of choices. To oh, uh, the best strategy here is to think about your own answer and then find the match. Okay, this is why scanning here will not help too much. 
So um, those soft drinks in beer are popular in Peru. How would you finish this sentence? So what do you think is a good way from what we just read uh, to finish this sentence? Okay. Give me your thoughts. And there could be more than one. All right. So just finish the sentence with correct grammar. You only need to write the second half in the chat, and I'll let you know if I think you're on the right track or if I agree with you. Okay. So how would you, how would you end this sentence? Okay. Uh, it's, of course, um, a complex sentence because it starts with the dependent clause, though soft drinks and beer are popular. So this would be a full sentence, the independent uh, clause. You can notice that grammar uh, right away. So Michael Fan says chicha is also popular. Mm -hmm. uh, Sammy says chicha is famous and traditional. However, chicha drink is the most popular. Um, okay, Hassan, don't use however because you already have your subordinating conjunction here, though. Okay, and you never use two of them, Hassan. So this would be an independent clause without a subordinating conjunction. Careful, because that could be the downfall of your answer in this case. Uh, Charlie Sen says chicha is very much popular. Um, yeah, again, remember, independent clause means this is a full sentence on its own. Okay. Um, I would keep it simpler than that, students. So I would go, oh, you're kind of on the right track, but I would go with uh, chicha is the uh, most popular uh, drink in Peru. Okay. Notice how this is a sentence by itself. Chicha is the most popular drink in Peru. Um, the reason that has to be a standalone sentence is because this is the dependent clause. Uh, remember your subordinate conjunctions and your main clause, your subordinate clause, or another way they say it is independent and dependent clause. Okay. So this is what I would say, and then I would think it through. Though soft drinks and beer are popular in Peru, chicha is the most popular drink in the country or in Peru, something like that. Okay. Now we find the closest match. Okay. So now we look for the statement that is the closest. And if we find it, great. If we don't, something's off. So let's see. Uh, they may have been served chicha. That's definitely not right. It is in an ideal foundation for the drink. It has only been consumed since the 1500s. It's non-alcoholic. Chicha is just as popular. It compensates for lack of flour uh, with um, uh, color. Mm, okay, this one actually looked pretty good because of the word popular. Okay, and that's a full sentence. Chicha is just as popular, would be a standalone sentence. Um, can lower cholesterol and prevent cancer. It can vary from town to town. Only one is commonly consumed. They would consume chicha in significant quantities. Uh, this has not been confirmed. It is clear that the historian's historical uh, shows this. Uh, yellow corn contains alcohol. Okay. Um, which one do you think is the best one here? And I already see a lot of students saying, I think E is the best. I don't think I is true, uh, Carolina, because it, they don't say only one is commonly consumed. All of those are commonly consumed, right? So I is kind of a misleading one here. It doesn't make sense. So I think I agree with probably the best. Heck here. Um, you can read it together, right? So you can say those soft drinks and beer are popular in Peru. Chicha is just as popular. That sounds like a nice sentence that would be in the passage uh, as well. So I think that works. Sure, with these kinds of questions in the first two or three, especially when you have so many, so you have six of them, uh, don't panic because you might get more clarity on these answers once you keep going, okay? Did everybody catch that? That's kind of an important tip. 
So uh, with these kinds of questions, it's common that candidates are a little bit less certain with one and two. But once you go through these steps for all of the choices, your certainty will likely increase for your previous answers. Does, does that make sense? Just because you'll start to have less choices and you're, you'll start to have more clarity on the information. So don't uh, freak out for the first couple and start scanning and searching through the text and uh, becoming uh, disoriented or, or um, lose confidence. Okay, does that make sense? So just keep going is my tip. Just keep going here through these first few. Okay. All right, number two. Thanks for the feedback. I can see that. Okay, cool. So number two, uh, while it is believed that Chicha has been around for thousands of years, okay, um, how would you finish that? While it is believed that Chicha has been around for thousands of years, uh, from your understanding of the passage, uh, how would you finish that sentence? Don't overthink it. Just give me a quick answer. The first thought that comes to mind from reading. Obviously, this is coming somewhere from the beginning, from the part about history. You don't need to go back. You don't need to scan the text. Okay. So Hassan says there is no actual evidence for that. Sure, that's one way we could finish it, Hassan. So there's no actual evidence for that. Um, there's no clear evidence. Yeah, so one option one, and sometimes it come up poll, uh, there is no clear evidence, okay? And you might come up with another option, like um, evidence only dates 500 years, okay? So I generally recommend keeping your thoughts a little bit flexible and possibly coming up with two answers if you have two good ones in mind. Both of these are really good, okay? Uh, so we're looking for either of these where the grammar is correct, okay? The grammar has to fit the sentence, okay? So evidence only dates back about 500 years or there's no clear evidence for thousands of years. Both of those are good, okay? All right, let's see. So. No, it is ideal. No, it has only been consumed uh, since the 1500s. Careful, that's a little bit misleading. So use your logic here. Okay, uh, is non-alcoholic. Um, the reason I said use logic here is because we know that's not true, right? Your answer wouldn't be a false statement. Okay, chicha is just as popular. It compensates for lack of flavor with color, uh, can lower cholesterol. It can vary from town to town. Only one is commonly consumed. They would consume chicha in significant quantities. This has not been confirmed. Okay, uh, it is clear that the histor it is clear that the historical shows this. Yellow corn contains alcohol. So this is not true. This one I showed before lack logic. A lot of you are saying now that it's K. Okay, so it has not been confirmed, uh, which is a paraphrase of what you said. There is no evidence. Right? Very good job. Um, I'm so proud of you, members. I'm going to give you a super duper giant thumbs up uh, because K is the right answer here. Now, hopefully you also realize that if you're not using the strategy that I'm showing you, but you're searching answers first, it can be really easy to choose the wrong answer. So K is the closest match to what you said. Definitely choose that one, okay? This is the best strategy to avoid misleading and confusing answers, incorrect answers. Okay, is that clear? So if you're searching for the answers before you're thinking, you will definitely get lower uh, band scores. Or you'll get less correct answers in this case. Okay, super important to keep that in mind. All right, so don't search first. Use your brain first, always. Okay, always. 
especially with multiple choice. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Before a person was sacrificed, uh, give me a quick answer for this one. Okay, so before a person was sacrificed, I definitely visualize this one, right? If somebody is going to uh, cut my heart out and sacrifice it to the gods while I'm still alive, I might as well pound back a whole bunch of chicha uh, so that I don't feel it, have a happy ending uh, before uh, meeting up with gods. Uh, so before a person was sacrificed, I would just simply say they drank chicha. Okay. So stay calm, <laughs> visualize. Yeah, they hopefully drank a lot of chicha. Um, all right. Now, of course, um, you're going to be going through this faster and faster with each one. So this is where you want to be the turtle for this kind of question. In the beginning, you'll be going slowly because all of the choices are new and unfamiliar. But as you go through uh, each question, the next question, uh, you'll get faster and faster. Okay, and a lot of you are probably A, they may have been served chicha, which is good. Now, keep it in mind um, because there could be a better one later, but we didn't see it. Uh, so I'm starting to remember these now because I've read over them twice. Right? So I'm confident with A, and it's definitely close to what I'm saying. So I'm going to choose A and go with it, okay? Um, although there are two main types of chicha, so how would you finish this one? Although there are two main types of chicha, remember this one? I kind of, I had a very good visual picture of this as well because I'm a bit familiar with beer and wine and I know it's the same. Uh, Samuel says one is better served. Bumi says one is consumed uh, much. Okay, I don't know about that. I don't remember them saying that. Maybe you're right. Maybe I don't remember. This passage is new for me as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sammy's saying my voice is cracking a bit. If that's the same for anybody else, let me know. Uh, I'm still good on my mic battery, so... Yeah, Beckjan, I like it. So Beckjan says its recipe varies from town to town. Yeah, uh, so recipes vary. Again, if you bring uh, your own knowledge here, uh, you know that with wine, with beer, there's a few different types, but there are so many different varieties because everybody has their own special recipe, right? Okay. Mm, it's crackling for everybody, eh? Let me see if I can adjust it here. Um, why suddenly that would happen. Um, but anyway, uh, let's keep going here. We're near the end of class, so hopefully you can hang in there for the last few. Okay, uh, so uh, let's go through these. Even if you don't hear me perfectly clearly, you can read this. That's the good news. So they may have been served chicha. It is an ideal foundation, only consumed, non-alcoholic, uh, compensates for lack of flavor with color, can lower cholesterol, prevent cancer, can vary from town to town. Ooh, that's literally verbatim, right? Okay. Good. I did a little bit of adjusting on my mic. Hopefully that was good. Uh, yeah, H, uh, when you have a verbatim match like that, it can vary from town to town. Um, then you're most likely bang on. It's almost like 100% uh, certainty that that's going to be the right answer, right? Pick up speed now um, as you're doing this. And when you practice this at home, you'll pick up more speed as well, okay? Number five, uh, similar to mulled cider, chicha morada contains cloves and cinnamon. And what else does it contain? Did anybody catch that? Now, here is where you can do a little bit of searching because we know it's in the production part. Uh, we know it's where it compares the two types of chicha, and it's really easy to look for cloves and cinnamon. So I, here for this question, logically would just say, hey, let's look at this one here. 
course, uh, chicha morada. Okay, so it's the non-alcoholic version. Um, and then uh, here you have the two types, and you can find uh, cinnamon and cloves, and is thus similar to uh, mauled cider. So cinnamon and cloves, okay? So we can read those there, okay? So that's an easy one to check the passage for. You can do it very, very quickly, okay? So they may have been served uh, chicha. It is an ideal foundation for the drink. It has been consumed as non-alcoholic. Chicha is just as popular. Uh, it compensates for lack of flavor. Which one do you think it is, looking at it? So we have cloves. We have cider. Can lower cholesterol and prevent cancer. It can vary from town to town. Only one is commonly consumed. They would consume chicha in significant quantities. Okay, we have cloves and cider. So some of you are thinking maybe it's D because we know it's non-alcoholic. And also, this one's a bit tricky. Remember, it can lower cholesterol and prevent cancer. So the two that pop out at me are this one and this one. So what I'm going to do, because I have two possible answers, is put both of them into the statement. Okay? So similar to mauled cider, chicha morada contains cloves and cinnamon and is non-alcoholic, okay? Um, there's something wrong with that, okay? And I know that's gonna be a little bit difficult to figure out, but for me, I would definitely choose G, can lower cholesterol and prevent cancer, okay? Uh, I'll tell you why, okay? Anybody, can anybody guess why I'm choosing G instead of D? So why G instead of D? Now, if you have this knowledge, you'll know. If not, you have to go back to that paragraph again and read it, okay? The grammar is okay for both. So what else could it be here? Um, yeah, Turka, you're, you're right, but there's actually uh, something wrong with is non-alcoholic. Anybody pick that up? Uh, mulled cider is alcoholic. Okay. So if you know that, you'll get it. If not, you have to go back and check which one is more accurate. So similar to mulled cider, chicha morada contains cloves and cinnamon. And you can't say non-alcoholic because mulled cider is alcoholic. Most of the time, it's an alcoholic drink. So that's not a similarity. Okay. If you don't know, don't know that mulled cider is alcoholic, uh, then uh, you need to go back and check. Mulled cider is usually alcoholic, so then you would check again. Okay. Lower blood pressure and cholesterol. It also has regenerative properties such as formation of collagen and the creation of connective tissues. It often contains cinnamon and cloves and is thus similar to mulled cider. Okay, so your answer is in there, all right? Okay, let's go to the last one. That was a bit confusing. I'll, I'll give that to you. Sometimes you get those kinds of answers. All right, uh, let's go to the last one here. So while chicha de hora is made from less flavorful yellow corn, anybody? Uh, yeah, Michael, I'll, I'll troubleshoot the the uh, speaker afterwards, okay? I'll see what's going on with the mic, okay? All right, so anybody? Uh, while chicha de hora is made from less flavorful yellow corn. Uh, yeah, very good, Bumi. So Bumi says it is a good foundation. Yeah, that was directly out of the passage, Bumi. It's a good foundation or base from the, for the drink. Very good. Yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, let's take a look at that. 
and I can see the answer right away because I'm getting quite familiar with the choices now. Which one is it? You'll probably get it pretty quick searching through the answers. I'm going to erase that so that you can a little bit more clearly. Yeah, very good. A lot of you right off the bat. B. Excellent. Good for you. Okay. So B will be the right answer there. Okay. So it makes a good foundation. B. Excellent. Okay. So we got through these questions. Um, I'm out of time for the rest of them, but uh, you can try this on your own members. Uh, here again is just a quick look. I'll keep this up for a second so you can check the video later answer these questions on your own. And then send me the answers in an email and I'll send you back the answer key. Okay. We've talked about these question strategies in the past. Many of you are familiar with it. If not, that's okay. You can find them on the websites. Okay. Here's the yes, no, not given. All right. So make sure to uh, check those, do those, complete those, and then send it to me by email. Okay. Uh, here is my email address again that aren't sure. Adrian at aehelp.com. For all of our viewers, uh, you can find our practice exams, our videos, of course, HD videos on our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com uh, for general. Uh, make sure to try out our premium package. It's well worth it. Uh, that's it for today's class. Students, I look forward to seeing your uh, emails with the answers for those summary completion. Yes, no, not given questions. And I wish you an awesome day. Uh, hang around for the listening part one and two practice. I'll switch up my microphone equipment. Hopefully that'll solve the issue. Uh, thanks for being here with me and see you shortly. Bye for now.